Five different ways to make this pork loin feed your family, all for $15. share with you one of my favorite budget saving tips for groceries. This is a pork loin from Costco that cost $1.99 a pound which is a killer deal. And you can make this pork loin into five different meals. If this is your first time here, please don't forget to like and subscribe down below. We do lots of budgeting and family tips and family fun. Now, my husband eats quite a bit. My kids, uh, it's kind of iffy. You may have to adjust this to the size of your family, but we're gonna go off the basis of each one of these meals will feed a family of four. So our first step will be to open this up and cut it up. So it ended up I had more meat than I was expecting, so we're actually going to get six meals out of this one pork loin. Three roasts, two sets of pork chops, and one pork taco dish. So this is pretty amazing and a great deal for $15. Okay guys, we're gonna start with recipe number one, pork carnitas. So let's get our pork cut up and then I will show you how to make it. Okay, so for these pork carnitas, we're just gonna slice this into about half inch cubes. If you've listened to any of my videos before, you will know that these two things are something that I cook with all of the time, onion powder and garlic powder. This recipe is no different. I am going to be using both of these along with a carne asada powder that I will try to link down below. You want to cover all of your meat with these seasonings, then get it all nice and combined, and then when you cook this, you just throw it in the fryer with maybe a little bit of oil, and you can pair it with some taco shells and whatever toppings that you like. This is one of my family's favorite dishes, and it is a crowd pleaser. So on to number two. Recipe number two is my tried and true standard, just plain old pork chops. Again, we are using garlic powder, onion powder, and all seasoning salt. This isn't spicy, I just like to use the same container that I always have. You could use spicy if you like. All you do is you sprinkle a little bit of garlic powder, a little bit of onion powder, and a little bit of all seasoning salt. And then flip them over and do the same. So I like to just pan fry these, so I just put them in a pan, maybe a little bit of oil, or just leave them plain, and then cook them, and then I like to slice them up and plate them, and they're really easy and super delicious. However, this time around, I am just gonna put them in the food saver and save them in the freezer for later. The third way that we are going to do is a bacon-wrapped roast. This is one of my favorites. It's really easy, it sounds hard, but it's super delicious and very easy to make. So first you're gonna take your roast and coat it in onion and garlic powder, and then with brown sugar. I'm not sure why pork and brown sugar go so well together, but they do, trust me. After this, it's time to cover your roast with bacon. I like to start with the ends and then wrap the other strips over it so it stays together nicely. You're then you're going to want to bake this at 350 for about 40 minutes, or you can put it in the crock pot on high for three hours. If you do use a crock pot, I suggest sticking it in your oven under the broiler setting on low for a couple of minutes to crisp up the bacon. The coup de gras of this recipe is the gravy that you can make with it. So when it's done, don't throw away the drippings, drain them into a small saucepan, and then add a brown gravy packet. It is delicious, I promise. Our fourth recipe is pork tacos. So this is a shredded pork taco that you make in the crock pot with the roast. It is really good. It is one of our family's favorites. You're gonna start by placing your pork roast into a crock pot and then you're going to mix up this brine of one can of Dr. Pepper, one fourth a cup of water, one teaspoon of garlic salt, one eighth teaspoon of salt, a fourth teaspoon of pepper, one four ounce can of diced green chilies, and one 10 ounce can of red enchilada sauce, and three fourths a cup of brown sugar. So you mix this up and then you pour it over the top of the pork roast and then you let it cook on high for six hours. Then you can shred it up and use it in tacos or burritos or as a sweet pork salad. It is delicious. And our fifth recipe is just a regular run of the mill pork roast. This is the kind of pork roast that I grew up having as a kid. 
So all this takes is some Montreal steak seasoning. You're gonna sprinkle that over both sides of your pork and then you're gonna get it ready to go in the oven. Now you will have to preheat your oven to 350 degrees and then you can also add in some carrots and potatoes if you like, it just adds some flavor to your roast. But then you add in your water to your dish and it should be about half the way up of your meat and then throw it in the oven for about an hour, hour and a half. Our final way is to make brown sugar Italian pork chops. These are a simple, easy recipe to make. You're gonna need a third cup of brown sugar and an Italian dressing mix. You're gonna mix these both together, get it nice and combined, and then use this as a dry rub on your meat. You wanna make sure that you get this dry rub covered all over your meat, both sides, making sure it's sticking really well. Next, you're gonna wanna place your meat in a tin foil lined baking dish and throw it in the oven at 425 for about 20 to 25 minutes. Sizzling and out of the oven. So one of the reasons that I like this so much is because I can make up all of these meals and get them ready beforehand and then put them in the food saver and throw them in the freezer so that all I have to do is take them out on the day that I'm going to make them and put them in the crock pot or get them ready that way. All right, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below and we'll see you again next time. Bye.